So up next is getting that KBD body kit or rear bumper on rather. So the KBD bumper is gonna be an amazing upgrade because it's straight up indestructible. So as the owner of that car is learning how to drift, he's not gonna have to worry about destroying anything. Luckily it uses all OEM mounts, so it should be a fairly bolt on affair. Now, there are a couple little tricks that I've learned throughout the years to make KBD mount and last a little easier. And one of them is to try and get rid of these plastic clips and mounting tabs and just to use a metal nut and bolt. So I'm gonna be doing that, uh, especially uh, like a flange nut or using a fender washer, which is a big washer with a small hole. And mounting it like that, I'll show you guys the hardware. And that will you know, help secure it because really you want the KBD stuff to be hard mounted as strong as possible in as many locations as possible so that it allows it to kind of just get whacked and flex and, and kind of like wiggle around, but then go back to its original shape. So you want it to be very hard mounted, whereas fiberglass, in my opinion, is much better when it's soft mounted with just a couple of zip ties because it holds its shape very well. But when it gets whacked, you want it to come off in one piece and kind of slide off track instead of getting destroyed or ripped in half or splintered uh, because then you have to repair it. It's a lot more of a pain in the butt. So KBD, very different approach and just kind of learned that over the years. So hopefully that helps you guys with a build at home. I definitely recommend KBD stuff, especially for a car that gets abused. Now I will admit, you know, if you don't mount it right, it can be a little floppy or it can have problems with the mounting location, depending on how your car is cut up and how many or how few OEM mounting locations you have. So, you know, it may not be ideal for your build, but especially on cars that get abused, I think it does. Uh, it does have a lot of value and it's something that I've certainly saved thousands of dollars over the years. I still love my fiberglass stuff. I use two F parts on my car that, you know, KBD doesn't make. So I use both, but you know, using it for the application is what's ideal. So make sure you guys are thinking about the, the big picture when you do that. So part of my job on this is to again after shaking it down kind of assess what's going on with it and see if I can see any little things that I would update, change, modify, whatever. And here's a big one. This is the handbrake cable and you can see, hopefully you can see that right here it's getting pinched when the lower control arm goes upwards or when the suspension compresses. So this is in a very bad spot and I'm actually kind of surprised it is right there. You can see there's a little bit of damage on it but it seems to be okay, no leaks yet. So I'm gonna relocate that over here to where the factory one runs because I know that's a safe spot and then add a little tab or somewhere to, to hold it to where it's out of the way and going in the right direction. And I also have all this junk in the side part right here where the <laughs> damn over fenders go. And you can see there's holes and holes and holes. So I'm gonna end up sealing all this up to help prevent smoke. Ben did a decent job of some of these co covering them up, but not all of them. And it really needs to be completely sealed if possible so that I can prevent any junk, smoke, dust, and crap from getting in there. And so I'm gonna foam all this and seal it all up so that we don't have to worry about that problem anymore. Okay, got the brake lines all done now. You can see much better routing here. Nice flush cut zip ties there holding it in place. And this is gonna have plenty of flex so when the suspension compresses and droops, we're at full droop right now. We can see there's no, no issue there. And I'll double check it when it's uh, you know under compression, but this should have plenty of flex to go up and down. Got it on the other side as well. Same sort of routing here. You can see up under there, I got nice and tucked up and following the OEM lines and it's just zip tied to those so that should be nice and reliable and solid just like Nissan designed it more or less. <laughs> All right, next I've got the spots right here mount to, to mount. I've got a mark so I can drill some holes, get that going underneath here. And I still got to clean out this one and just keep going. So no time to waste. I'm filthy so I'm putting this camera down. <laughs> 
Okay, so I've got a OEM mounting spot right here. It's gonna hold the front leading edge of the bumper, but I also want another one here because this gap kind of increases and the factory bracket goes onto here, but it's like a slide on thing that really doesn't have a provision on the KBD bumper. So I'm gonna use a riv nut. And if you're not familiar with these, it's a great tool in the automotive world to basically put a threaded hole where there isn't one. And this car has them already all over the place to hold on over fenders. Now I personally don't recommend you use them for over fenders. They are not ideal for that situation. But in this case, uh, in my opinion, I think they are. So um, if you're curious as to why, I'll make another video on that later. But rivets are the way to go for attaching over fenders. Anyway, so the process is pretty simple. You drill a pilot hole and then you open that hole up to be the diameter of this and then you use this riv nut tool to terminate it and then essentially it just squeezes it down and puts the hole where you want it. So I'm going to pick a spot along here that I think looks good and I'll go ahead and put that riv nut in there and then I'll be able to put the hole in the bumper to match it up and have an extra mounting point that's pretty solid and will close this ugly gap that could appear if this bumper starts to sag. Now I will say one kind of negative to aftermarket bumpers in general, but KVD as well, is they are a little heavier and they're never gonna be quite as perfect as OEM. You know, this material is thicker than the factory plastic. Obviously it's much, much stronger, damn near indestructible, but there are some, you know, pros and cons to everything. So a little bit of added weight and a little bit more difficult to mount them sometimes. Uh, however, that being said, I just vacuumed out probably eight or 10 pounds worth of rocks and junk in the fenders. So the amount of weight that we're going to add for adding this KVD is negated by just simply vacuuming and, and foaming that so that that won't happen again. So there are little tricks and, and it's, everything's a trade off. But in this case, I think it's certainly worth it. So first thing I'm going to do is set this with my tool here. Just kind of kind of allow me to start the hole a little easier okay got the rib nut now installed in there you can see nice and flush and now i have an additional mounting point for this bumper so it's going to have a front a rear one on the back here another one here and then these kind of don't really hold it on the kbd does have the provision for it this little flap but it's kind of just like slides in the, the groove and just half-ass holds it there. It really is not a reliable place to hold it for. And so don't think about those. But basically one, two, three, four on each side. So that's eight. So that should be pretty damn good. And then if I need to add a little bit of support at the bottom corner here, I can do that later. But this will essentially hold it on nice and solid. Now what I've done here is I've gone ahead and put a flanged bolt on here so it's got a washer on it already a captive washer and then i drill the hole and i got that poking through so that when this goes on those are gonna go through these little square holes and then i'm gonna use a flange nut kind of like this and i'll probably put a fender washer this is a fender washer so that plus that together on the back side of that square and that'll give me a nice solid surface area to mount that thing and should really hold it well and kind of take up that that square hole that you know has the provisions just for the factory plastic thing that really doesn't hold on very good this is the hardware i'll be using as i said it's a flange bolt meaning it's got a captive washer on it like that and you can see here that i've got it lined up just right i made a little mark Hopefully you can see in there, there it goes. It's going into the rib nut. So now I just have to get under here and try and tighten it with one hand. Hope you guys appreciate this. Filming and building at the same time is not easy. Look at that. Tighten that gap right up. Now I can go on and put the hardware here. This hardware is already on and you can see that that looks much better, nice and flush. And then the final one, I'll get this mated nice and flush and then drill a hole right here in order to bolt it together there. And then it'll be solid mounted, you know, seriously solid. So why don't you guys do me a favor, go subscribe to the channel. 
I hate to ask for you to do that, but it's your currency as a viewer and it helps me keep the channel going and growing and allow me to do stuff like this. So, you know, I'm holding the camera with one hand, I'm building a car with the other and I'm doing that for you guys at home. I don't need to watch these videos. I'm the one doing it. So please do me a favor, just give me that, subscribe. And if you like the video, share it with your friends. That's another way that I can get more people to watch it. So those are the two things I ask of you if you're enjoying this video. All right, we're all finished here with the mounting set part of this thing. See, I got that flange bolt there. Nice and flush, super flush right here. Nice and solid, solid, no gap. I mean, it is solid, you guys. It is seriously solid. Mount there, mount behind there. All here, same, same. So now I'm gonna go through, you can see these kind of jagged cuts and I've been hurting myself cut, cutting my fingers. So I'm gonna go through and file all that little stuff off just to give it a nice finish. And so I don't hurt myself anymore. And whoever works on it next will probably appreciate that too. So get that cleaned up. And then I'm gonna finish doing the foaming and cleaning area here. And then I can put the over fenders back on and the taillights back in. And then all that's left to do is wrap this bumper. So I have to prep it and then I'm gonna take it somewhere for wrapping. The fit is really good though. I mean, KBD is definitely a solid fitting body kit. Even with it being polyurethane, it's really, really good right out of the box. And as long as you mount it right. Guys, I can't stress that enough. If you have KBD and you mount it like a moron, it's gonna be terrible. It's gonna be floppy. It's gonna be falling off or ripping things or bending things. I don't know, it's, it's gonna be awful. Just spend the extra time. Mount it solid and correctly and with as many OEM points as possible. Irving does a really good job of, you know, making it available to mount with the OEM. He puts all the little ledges and all the little flanges and everything to where you can do that. So do it. <laughs> it makes all the difference, I promise. The one other thing is some people have a problem with this being a little floppy. So I might come in here and just put a real simple mount that goes from here to here just to keep it from flexing like this. And it doesn't really matter, but it's just for, you know, another aesthetic thing, just the little details. And also you can see it kind of curves out like that. I want this point to be no wider than the width of the tire. So depending on how that looks when it's all on the ground with the wheels and tires on it, you can see this flares out even more so a little on this side. So that's just an aesthetic, you know, personal preference, but I like it to be all flush and in line from looking at the back. I think that's what looks best. So that's what I'm going to do. Next, I'm sealing all the holes, and for that, I'm using this heavy duty, uh, I forget what they call it, foil mastic sealant. There's the info on it. Anyway, it's like a way better than duct tape slash insulation tape. It's both, it's better than both. It's insulated, it's thick, and it's very sticky. And what I recommend is you get a tool like this and you use it to roll it on because it really helps make a really solid, it hears much better. And then you don't have to worry about it coming off or anything like that. So this, between this type of tape and this application method, you know, clean it real good and then put it on. I think it's a, definitely the best way to do something like this. And then again, the foam is kind of going to go in over here. So this is the duct tape job that the previous owner did. Honestly, not that great, but it's held on. Well, some of the stuff I'm going to pull up and redo, but actually, hell, I might as well just redo all of it. Yeah. 
Anyway, that's the next step. I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna put this camera down because this is taking way too long. <laughs> I decided to go ahead and cut this off right here. This isn't doing anything and I feel like the wheel could come up and you know the tire could touch that and that would be bad. So I'm just gonna kind of follow this angle like that and cut that off real quick. Last step, fill in the cracks. I'm using this great stuff, gaps and cracks filler stuff. It's just spray foam, lots of different brands. They all do the same thing. Works fantastic. Not really flammable, I don't think. Anyway, it does. So if you've never used this before, it's extremely sticky. It will ruin everything it touches, clothing, hair, skin. Use protective equipment, try not to get it on your clothes, and it's a mess, so just be ready for it to be a mess. Okay, here goes nothing. You look like you don't approve. <laughs> Chris is like, what in the drifting idiot are you doing? Foam job done. You guys can see here, it is ever expanding and it will continue to expand. I probably put a little bit too much here, but it's really easy. Once it's done, you can just use a knife and just shave it and shape it however you want. We can see a little bit coming out right here. And similar deal on the other side. It's just gonna be continuing to slowly expand. You can see I did a better job of not using too much here. I don't know if you can even see that, it's kind of dark. But ideally, I, I actually ran out of foam. I need to fill this hole still, and I need to fill these up a little bit more, and then I kind of wanted to put some up there as well. So probably gonna go grab another can or two of that stuff to fill in the, the final gaps and cracks because I ran out. So I think that's, you know, the sun is obviously down. That's one hell of a day's work. I appreciate you guys following along. On the next episode, I'm going to finish out the foam process. I'm gonna get the overfenders reinstalled and fit them to the bumper. I think there might be some trimming or a little bit of, you know, minor adjustments needed there. Then I'm gonna take it to get wrapped. So that'll be good. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and prep the KBD bumper to get wrapped. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Again, please make sure to subscribe and check back in shortly when I can finish this project up. Hopefully you learned something, hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully it was entertaining enough and not too boring. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Nice, plastic welder, got this kind of tip on it. Water wetter, not just too much of it.